Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to make this quick. I, I debated if this was worth talking about, but it is. Um, I've exposed this wolf. You see, that's Young's. His, his channel goes by Pastor David. Right? Pastor, Pastor David's, David's channel. Pastor Dave's channel. So, he talked about me changing my channel name, right? Which I did a few times because I wanted to find a catchy name. But he changed, and then he said that, you know, he talked about me changing my channel name, and because I changed my channel name, I was hiding stuff, and I wasn't. Well, he already did it himself. He changed his channel name many times. He has many channels. I mean, he's he's an old troll, an old bag. But anyway, uh, I told you all that he's a false teacher, he's a false prophet, and I'm not the only one that exposed him. This person right here exposed him too. I'm not promoting him as a as a prophet of God, but um, the rapture becomes he he uh, exposed this wolf in sheep's clothing as well. So I'm gonna let you hear uh, portions of this video, and uh, you know, as always, remember test the fruits. Since I've done that video pointing out super gospel gangster being a false teacher, um. There's other people on here that have been on here a very long time, like Paul Bigley, uh, this High Young's pastor, call himself Pastor Dave, and I wanted to do a warning video about High Young's video here, H-Y-U-N-G-S, and the, the, the name of the video is Rapture Porn Parties, Foolish Virgin, The Door's About to Shut, Get Off YouTube. Now what he's saying is, he's one of those people, you know, if, if you listen to him, he has a lot in common with Seventh-day Adventists and Catholics and Mormons and Jehovah Witness and the fact that it's a works-based gospel. And you can sit here and listen to him talk. I'm going to stop there for a minute. In other words, this person here, Hyungs, is a mason. He's a devil worshiper. Now, um... When he says works-based gospel, he's basically saying, this gentleman is basically saying that Pastor Dave is not teaching, as it says in James chapter 2, that uh, faith without works is dead. So faith and works go hand in hand. So when you're standing before the judgment seat of Christ, not only is Christ going to count you for every deed that you did on this earth, he's also going to account for everything you said, like I said, everything you did. And for how much faith you had in him and the works that you did based on that faith. Did that faith produce good works? When you did the works for the Lord, did you do it because you have faith in the Lord because you wanted to serve him? Let's continue. In circles. One second he's saying Jesus took works and sin and our sins to the cross. And the law to the cross. And then the very next, you know, and he's not even have another breath yet. And then he's saying, okay, now, but you've got to do works. You know, you can't just do nothing or you're not really saved. This is a lordship, Pentecostal, nasty, disgusting cult following, teaching. He is a cult leader. You know, and he's, people actually, you know, 250, 270 views and... And this one here, he actually got 16 upvotes and 26 downvotes. In fact, I'm going to vote down now, 20 to 27. And I have left comments. And I was not kind because he is a false teacher. He is a servant of Satan. He is mixing work with grace. And he will pay the price for it. And it's my prayer, and what I want you to pray is that when the rapture comes and goes and he's left behind... That he does no harm to himself because he's going to have to realize, he will realize that all this time he's been talking and saying, mixing works with grace, that he was wrong. And he has knowingly led people down the wrong path. He's been warned many times by many people that he is a works-based salvation satanic teacher. I'm going to stop there. Now, we all know, okay that we were saved by grace. What Jesus Christ did on the cross for us, he died for our, our sins to save us from hellfire, okay? And give us a chance at redemption. That's why the Bible calls to repent. But 
You cannot believe in that satanic, dangerous doctrine that this false prophet teaches that once saved, always saved attitude. He believes that you can uh, sin, or he believes, I'm sorry, let me back it up. He believes that God paid for, the, for, our, for humanity's sins on the cross, past, present, and future. Therefore, you could continue to live in sin. That's what he believes. He believes that. That's what this gentleman means. Okay, that... That he has that works-based gospel. Works-based gospel meaning that a person can continue to live in sin and still serve the Lord. That they don't have to worry about having faith in Jesus because God saved us all by his grace. And he saved us from all sin, past, present, future. Does that make sense? So... That's what he's saying this person believes. I hope I'm explaining it right because I had to pray on this. Okay? I had to pray on this. You do know that Jesus saved you by grace, but it doesn't mean that once saved, always saved doctrines from Satan. You can't believe that. Okay? You still, if you sin and you fall on your face, you still have to confess your sins, repent of it, go through correction so it could be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so you could be forgiven and make sure you forgive others in order for God to forgive you. And it has to come from the heart, true repentance. It has to come from the heart. It has to come from you, your heart, in your heart of hearts that you want to repent and through your action. So when you are serving God, you can't serve God just by faith alone, okay, or just works alone. They go hand in hand, as it says in James chapter 2. Faith without works is dead. Faith and works go hand in hand. Faith perfects works. Works perfects faith. You have to have bold faith when you're doing works for God. Because when you have bold faith and you're doing works for God, you know that you are trusting in God that the works you're doing is pleasing to his eyes, to his nose, to his mouth, to his beautiful spiritual senses, and that... You're producing good fruits because of the works and the faith intertwined. Let's continue. And he's been warned. He's been told. Now, part of the problem is he's an ex-Assembly of God person. And he claims that he's a pastor. I don't know if we've got his, probably from an online degree program, which is just dangerous because that, this is what you end up with. People that would teach works. You know, you have to do works. If you are saved, you are saved that you must do good works. But that's not what the Bible says, that you may do good works, unto good works. And who is to judge what a good work is? You know, a person may be carnal, and then see an old lady trying to get across the road, and helps that old lady across the road. Now, we are going to be judged for the most minutest to the most major things that we do in our lives as Christians. And he's not a Christian. So it, he may see that good work and not even recognize it as being a good work. But he says you have to do things in order to maintain the salvation. And there's no getting around that. I'm going to stop there. Okay, two things. First, you have to have faith and you have to have works. Okay, they go hand in hand. Now, I'm going to say something really clear, okay? God will evaluate you for everything that you do. You do have to have good faith and good works because the Lord's going to evaluate that as well. But works alone is not going to get you into heaven. You have to live a life pleasing to God. God's not going to look at if you're good or evil because as far as God is concerned... Man's works are like dirty rags to him. Everybody's a sinner, even me. We all fall short of the glory of God. Good and evil is irrelevant in the most high God's eyes. What you perceive as good and evil is irrelevant to him, irrelevant to the most high God, because God perceives good and evil differently than we do. So what you might find good, God might find evil. So you have to make sure... You are living a life pleasing to Jesus, and you have to check your walk with Him every single day. You are living a life that is holy, based on Jesus Christ's standards, not yours, not mine. And you have to have good faith and works. I hope this gentleman knows that, and I believe that's what he was trying to emphasize. I'm not saying that as fact, but I hope he knows that. Um, he is correct that you will be judged for everything that you do, and that 
You know, who are we to judge if a work is good? But, because God has a final say, but we must test the fruits. We must use discernment to judge if a person's works are pleasing to God, even their faith, or not. Because if their works are not pleasing to God and either is their faith, that, person's in, that person is in sin. And if you, as a watchman on the wall, know this, okay, you have to call it out to that person in error if the Holy Spirit commands you to. Otherwise, the blood of that individual and maybe other souls will be in your hands. So you have to live holy to Jesus Christ standards, not our own, to the standards of Jesus Christ. This demon right here, he doesn't live holy. He believes, okay, that, that good works will get you in heaven. That's it, just works. Doesn't matter if you're living in sin or not, just works. Let me tell you something. If you are living in sin and you profess to do works from the, for the Lord, those are going to be defined at, to the Lord as dead works. Because they're being done in sin. When you do works for the Father, you have to do works, okay? When you are sinless, without sin, and when you are living a righteous, holy life unto the Father. Because when you do do works good in the Father's eyes, that are, you know, when you're living a holy life, a righteous life, without sin, those are good works that the Lord will, will hold into account, Along, you also have to have good faith and good works while living a holy life. Because let me tell you something. If you have, if you're living in sin and you profess to have faith in God, but you're living in sin, that faith is dead in God's eyes, just like the works can be dead in God's eyes. Because how can you profess to have faith when you're living in sin? That is a counterfeit faith if you're living in sin. You always have faith in Jesus Christ. But along with that faith, you have to live holy and righteous. So that faith could be accounted as righteousness unto the Father's eyes. So you can have good faith and good works, okay, while you're living righteous and no sin. So that way, in the Father's eyes, you could be accounted as among the righteous just like Abraham was. Let's continue just for a couple more minutes because I don't know if I can stomach looking at that guy's face. So why he, why he even tries to say something along the lines of Jesus nailed sins to the cross? Jesus took works to the cross. And then turn around and say the exact opposite. I don't even know if he has the mental capability to understand or listen to himself in what he's saying. I know he doesn't have anything spiritual understanding. Um, re watch this video and just start counting the amount of times he says works are a necessity. I can explain the mental capacity part. Um, this person here that scrunched up face you're looking at he's bipolar and drunk I already told you people that he's an alcoholic you know there was a video I put up that there's beer in his cupboard and he shows it to the world and you know his brain cells are depleted because alcohol does that to you okay and um this individual right here does say that the works are uh nailed to the cross Jesus Christ did not nail works to the cross, not even in the Bible. Jesus Christ died for the sins of mankind. You still have to work your way into heaven. You have to work on your salvation. It says it in the Bible. You have to have good faith. You have to live holy unto God because everything we say or do is going to be accounted for. It's going to be evaluated by the Father. Just a couple more minutes, ladies and gentlemen. To salvation, you have to do something. You just can't do nothing and be saved. And the whole point of being believing upon Christ and receiving unmerited favor for that faith is that works cannot save or maintain your salvation. Yes, they have everything to do with rewards at the being seat of Christ, and there are going to be those there that lose everything, and that everything will be taken for them and given to those that have much more. So I just wanted to expose him, do it public, and so that everybody can see. And I'm getting comments from people telling me, of course, that I have no right to expose people. And these people are the, the, the people that are so biblically ignorant that they shouldn't even be speaking anyway. Because the Bible is very clear. You test everything that comes from man. You test everything that comes from spirits. That's what Acts 17.11 is all about. I'm going to stop there for a minute. That's also mentioned in 1 John. Um, test um, every 
everything, discern everything, test all spirits if they are of God, for false prophets are coming to the world. False Christs are arising as well. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on the wall exposing demons like this, you are going to get comments, some stupid, ignorant, brain-dead comments from people saying, who are you to judge? Judge lest you be judged. And they neglect to look at the scriptures that says, in like in the first book, uh, I believe it's First John, that says, don't judge by appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So in other words, look inside the heart and see if that person's fruits are true by going to God first. Okay? And Ezekiel, what is it, 30, 18 I think it is? Ezekiel 33 says to blow the trumpet. Very clear. It says in the Bible to uh, blow the trumpet. To, in other words, if God tells you to warn the masses of somebody in error, you have to warn the masses or God's going to put the blood of those souls on your head. It says it in the Bible. So if people, if watchmen are exposing false prophets, they're doing what God says. So you people that make brain dead comments to not cause division or don't expose false prophets, you obviously didn't read the Bible. And like this gentleman said, you're obviously being very ignorant. And I'm going to add stupid to that word because God's very clear in the word that you have to expose false prophets. You go to them in private twice. And if they don't listen, you know, with the witness each time, you, then you go to the church, meaning the public, you know, the body of Christ. And you let them know what's going on about this individual being an error. You have to warn the mask. Because if you don't, more souls are going to fall off the path. You have to warn the masses. It's, it's a requirement in the Bible. If you don't, you are living in sin if you don't. So you can't sit there and say only God's a judge. You people need you people that preach that that false doctrine. Okay? About only God's a judge and you can't judge righteous. You need to pick up a Bible. Now I'm gonna correct something here. God is the only judge. God is the final judge. That is true, and I agree with that. When I said false, I mean people that say that you as a watchman can't expose any false prophets because only God gets to do that. God gets to have the final say. But Jesus Christ demands that we as watchmen on the wall judge righteously and test the fruits of every spirit if they are of God or not. And if they're not, you expose those evil fruits. That's what I mean. Continue. Testing the spirits, whatever, testing a human, whatever they say to you, if it does not match the scriptures, throw it out. And it says, bark out and expose false teachers. So anybody coming along telling you not to do that is just completely biblically ignorant, and I have no time to do it. I've tried to explain to one person, and it just, it just to the point where I just told him, don't call me here no more. Because, you know, you're just, you don't have enough understanding of scripture or spiritual understanding to even leave comments, you know. All right. See you guys later. All right, I'm going to stop there. Let me mark that down. As... Anyway, um, I've said what I had to say on this piece, but, you know, for you people that tell me you shouldn't cause division and discord, correcting a false prophet is not causing division and discord, okay? You people making brain dead comments like I just mentioned, that's causing division and discord. Pick up a Bible, get you some knowledge with the Holy Spirit leading, and then holler back. Until then, those who make stupid comments like that, I suggest you keep your mouth shut. Okay? So, I'm saying that out of love, but I'm, I'm like I said, I'm all about my father's business. I'm defending Jesus Christ, and I'm not going to sit here and listen to some wolf in sheep's clothing telling me I shouldn't be exposing a demon that you just looked at, David Zacker, who, by the way, likes to beg for money and rob God behind the cameras. Okay? And yes, he is a drunk. That being said, I got to um, go handle some stuff. Stuff meaning the word of God, the word of God, the will of God. And I hope you people just learn to test the spirits and stop listening to mankind and listen to God and rely on his understanding and solely on him and seek his counsel in all things.